This is from last year. This is on the Fox 56 News. As far as I know, this woman has never been found, and if there's been any more information on her case, I haven't seen it. I'm going to do some more reading on her, try to find out a little bit more. I know it wasn't too long ago someone on Facebook asked the question about her and brought her back up. So here is 55-year-old woman missing from Pikeville, Kentucky. Kentucky State Police are investigating a missing 55-year-old Pikeville woman and are asking for the public's assistance in locating her. Rebecca Sloan of Millard was last seen on August the 8th in the Coal Run community of Pike County. She is 5 foot 3 inches tall and weighs about 125 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. She was last seen wearing blue jeans, a gray shirt, and white tennis shoes. Anyone with any information can contact the Kentucky State Police in Pikeville at 606-433-7711. Kentucky State Police was contacted on August the 29th, 2022 in reference to a missing Pikeville woman. The initial investigation indicated that Rebecca Sloan, 55, of Millard, Kentucky, was last seen on August the 8th, 2022, in the Coal Run area. I remember reading more about her, and I believe it, that it was from her son, possibly. So now, this was dated September the 3rd of 2022. Please say a prayer that Rebecca Hopkins Sloan is safe and gets in contact with her family. If you have seen her, you can message or call Kentucky State Police. The family has had so much heartache and sorrow. Please share this. Maybe someone has seen her. Uh, she has a family that loves her and grandbabies that she adores. She is a very special and amazing woman. I'm begging, if anyone knows anything, please let us know. Now, this was from someone who I'm assuming is a relative of hers. I've said this about some of the stories that I do. I, I have covered some of the bigger stories I have covered some stories that are very well known and then some of these cases like this are really known only to the local people and to the police in the local communities but they don't get the kind of media coverage and the media attention that some of the bigger names get and you just do not um, so this is from Facebook, and this is a post made by this woman's son. This was dated December the 30th of 2022. Please, if anyone knows anything about my mom, please contact me. I'll be 100%. No one will know how I know I'm a person of my word. He does believe that she is deceased by foul play. He has a post on here wishing her happy birthday in heaven. Then there's a post from August of, of last year. So she had been missing at this point for about two weeks. And he says, please, anyone has seen my mom, please contact the police. I have lost everyone, and I can't lose her, too. Um, and there's a post here that says, if anyone has seen Becky Hopkins. Now, she goes by Hopkins or Sloan. And many of the posts that I've seen about her have listed her as Hopkins. And it just says, if anyone has heard from my aunt, Becky Hopkins Sloan, since August the 9th, can you please contact the Kentucky State Police? A missing persons report has been filed, and we would appreciate any information. Her personal belongings, her purse, and her little dog are all still at her home. There's very little, you know, listed. I, I'm going to type her name in one more time just on Google. Um, I don't know if she's been listed on any of the, like, name us. I'm going to see. When you go to the news 
pages that have her listed. There's, it's really basically the same. It's like every news organization just picked up the one story and just copied it because there's no additional details. It just describes what she was wearing. It describes her appearance and uh, where she was last seen. This is one of those cases where you... The stories that you pick up on Facebook, the little comments from family, friends, people in the community will allude to there being foul play, allude to someone being involved in it, maybe a an ex-boyfriend or a boyfriend, a current uh, partner or someone that this person was involved with in some way. But the police never bring up those names. Were they really doing a hard investigation into this woman's disappearance? Or was she just considered another, you know, name for them to put on their website? I hate it when I start a story on somebody like this and then there's just nothing, you know? There's just really nothing there. And this this is one of the reasons why I started doing these videos like this. Um, like I said, I may from time to time bring up or mention someone like uh, John Benet Ramsey or some of those more well-known cases, but... I started this page to talk about people local, I ta to talk about people who don't get the kind of coverage and the kind of, you know, searches done for them as some of these that we see featured on TV night after night, you know? And, and not just for that reason, but also just because these are our people, you know. There's a reputation. If you said, if you asked someone a question, name someone missing in Kentucky, Andrea Nabel's name is probably going to come up. Maybe um, Crystal Rogers. But very few people are going to say Becky Sloan, you know, because there's not a whole lot about her. The, the most links that I found were for local news organizations right here in Kentucky, right here close to like um, the West Virginia area. And it's all um, copy and paste. They all tell the same details. They don't go into any, they don't interview anybody. They haven't come out and talked to the family. They haven't been, uh, you know, I don't know if any searches have been conducted, if the family has put together search parties. And gone out to areas to look for her. Sadly, there's not much else to say about her, so I'm going to move on to another case. This is one that I have never heard of, and so I'm just going to... This was from March 31st, 2022. This is on the Unsolved Appalachia page. Shelley K. Schaffner. On March the... 21st, 2011, 42-year-old Shelley K. Schaffner was last seen by her boyfriend, Jeff Green, driving along I-75 South, entering Kentucky from Ohio. She was following behind his vehicle in a blue Nissan 4x4 pickup. She supposedly sent him a text sometime later. The actual time of his story has been explained in the, has not been explained, saying that she didn't love him anymore and she was leaving him. He then went on to tell the police that she could be with a man named Ralphie. Shelley was originally from Ohio, which is about a four hour drive from where she had been staying in Berea, Kentucky. This was the home of Jeff Green. According to an archived article I found on Crime Watchers, Jeff gives quite a different story. This article apparently was a direct interview with Jeff, who claims everyone is trying to make him look like a bad guy. He says the last time he saw Shelley was on March the 19th at the residence. She was in the driveway speaking to someone on the phone. 
and Jeff said he assumed that that's who she left with. He included a description of a car that she was supposed to have gotten into as a little black car with a white stripe. She then supposedly met um, this man through Jeff Green's daughter. He was even able to track down the man at a gas station a while after Shelley vanished and have a conversation with him. I want to also add here that according to Jeff, he doesn't know the man's last name, but he does know where he lives. Shelley's son received a text from his mother on March the 19th. She told him that she had found a ride and was on her way back to Ohio. He actually dropped her off in Kentucky on March the 14th, and she went to visit Jeff Green. What I can't understand is why there are two completely different stories that Green is telling. The truth normally stays the same no matter how many times you tell it. He claimed the Kentucky State Police made up the entire first story. Everything about this case seems convoluted. Kentucky State Police Detective Joey Peters says that Green stopped cooperating and that his story is not true. So what happened to Shelley? Does Jeff know more than he's letting on? I think the text message to her son saying that she found a ride back to Ohio was probably from whoever the person was that uh, caused her disappearance. This is something that I've talked about before. These people, when they kill, kill someone, kidnap someone, or harm them in some way, often get their phone and um, they'll play a cat and mouse game with the family members. They want to throw the family members off and the police and everybody else into thinking everything's fine. The message is coming from that person. If you ever have anyone in your life go missing or, or you can't contact them and suddenly you get a text from them, Insist that you talk to them on the phone. Insist that you FaceTime with them. And if they're not willing to do that, then you probably know that it's a good chance you're not talking to who you think. Um, I don't know what is the truth, but something about this interview on Crime Watchers throws me off. It doesn't sound right. He seems more defensive than someone who has nothing to hide. He said that he knew where this person lived. Did he ever turn that over to law enforcement? Could this person really exist? Maybe he was the person that she supposedly was getting a ride with back to Ohio. Or could she have gotten into the vehicle with someone and met with foul play? Regardless, I don't think she ran off with another man who had money, as Jeff claimed. I think if she were alive, she would have been in contact with her children. There have not been any further news releases concerning the current state of the case. I emailed the lead detective, but I haven't gotten a response. Since March the 19th, 2011, her cell phone and her bank account have been untouched. If you have any information, you can contact the Delphos Police Department at 419-692-4015 or the Kentucky State Police at 859-623-2404. Shelley was described as 5'4", 113 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. And she was last seen in 2011. So see, I had never heard of her case. I, I never heard of her or Janet Jojo Stevens Brown. No, never, never, never her Aunt Norma Jean went to her grave this summer wondering what happened to her. On October the 14th, 2009, 25-year-old Janet Jolene Stevens Brown, known as JoJo, 
was last seen at the Junior Food Mart on 29th Street in Ashland, Kentucky. I think at this time it's known as Ken's 29th Street Express Market. This was posted March 21st, 2021. Now, she was last seen in 2009 in Ashland, Kentucky. There was another possible sighting of her later on November 11, 2009 in the parking lot of the Vincent Apartments on Winchester Avenue. According to local gossip, apparently the location of JR's was a hot spot for drug deals, which means that there could definitely have been some seedy individuals hanging around the gas station when JoJo stopped there. According to an article by the Daily Independent, she left her home at around dusk to walk to Junior's for a pack of cigarettes and a pop. It was only a few blocks away from where she lived. According to law enforcement, they were unable to locate any connections to anyone outside of the local area that she had been in contact with. There was no indication that she had plans to leave or go anywhere or that she had left voluntarily. This is bolstered by the fact that she had left behind all of her personal belongings in her home. That being said, there was an active warrant out for her, but her family believes that even if she were on the run, she would have at least made a phone call and let them know where she was. It doesn't go into any kind of detail about what kind of warrant and unless it was for something really major such as murder or something like that, I can't imagine somebody, you know, running off. She was twenty five years old at the time that she went missing. She was described as five foot one and around a hundred and ten to a hundred and twenty pounds. She's a white female with brown hair, and a, a, the last known sighting of her was October the 14th, 2009, but there was a possible sighting of her almost a month later on November 11th, 2009. She has two tattoos. She has two hearts on each forearm, and one says Ashley Michael and Sugar and Spice on her right shoulder blade in a heart. She did wear eyeglasses. It doesn't say if she was wearing them at the time she disappeared, but more than likely she did. And she has a smile scar on her chest. I appreciate everyone for watching. I just wanted to throw together a couple of little stories from some un lesser known cases. I am going to do a little bit more research into these people and see if there have been any updates at all on them. And I'm going to ask around some people about Becky Hopkins Sloan and see if there's been anything said about her or if maybe I can find someone in her family who might be willing to discuss her case. Thanks for listening.